is having that part of the world now. I am going to uh, a little bit about uh, we the people. We the people of the world is the community of patients. Uh, taking back our taking back our community and cleaning it up while helping our sisters and brothers by bringing peace and love, restoring freedom and uniting with the water. Our mission is, with the leader people is, is to plan to enrich, oppress, and planning, life, educating, and both empowerment. We are a community of patriots. Supporting the Constitution of Law and order of freedom, a safe life to life and the American family. Our vision is what the city is today is to where individuals faith, freedom, liberty, and justice uh, is shared and maximized. Where the Constitution is reversed and upheld, and where the Americans are free. To pursue your American dream. The We the People of Milwaukee is united together with our brothers and sisters on cleaning Milwaukee up and town, standing against a government overreaching our youth and uniting Milwaukee with peace and love and restoring liberty again and freedom. This is a nonpartisan grassroots organization. Which is founded by Pastor Virginia Pratt, and we have no political appreciation. Our goal is to educate and work together as a community. That's our goal as we move forward here. And uh, with that kind of statement, again, thank you all for coming out to with me to an uh, event and it's about empowering our kids in uh, Milwaukee County. The next thing we'll do is we'll hear from I would like to say a few words about Mr. Keith Carrington, the principal of North Division. As you all know that he passed away, I do believe, on Thursday. And I am one to say that I'm so grateful that I had an opportunity to meet him. He was a man of God. He was a man of integrity. He was a man that cared about the community. He was a man that loved the children. I, I, I'm so grateful that Mr. Carrington gave me the opportunity to come here at North Division to be able to help make a difference in the community. Although we don't have a number of quite the uh, number of folks that should be here, but nonetheless, they will be here. We will move forward to small ones and God will work up to bigger numbers. I thank this for character as you go forward because this neighborhood with him being the black man he worked. You know, he wasn't one of those guys that, that walked around in a suit and said, okay, I got it, you know, so he did yours. He was a man that rolled up his sleeve and he worked and he wanted you guys to know, hey, that whatever you want to do to be successful in life, work hard, and you can be that way. And you can have those things. And he was the one that was a positive for the kids. And so instead of being negative, he tried to find a way for, I give you a good example. You know, we all have these kids and I mean, this doing this reckless ride and car feeds and stuff like that. What he did is he helped uh, create it and encouraged the kids, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to teach you how to get your driving license so you can be legal driving and do the right thing and don't have to do stuff illegal. So he had a group of kids in here. I, I think about it during the weekday. If you, you come here on Tuesday, you'll see the gym field with black males. Most of black males in here from the age of eight so like about 16, they're all in here and they're all going through and doing some positive things and I like about that, that, that team. But I give it to Mr. Carrington because he was a man of true integrity. He was about making a difference in your life. If he saw you walking with your man and he made you pull those hands up. He didn't be standing around here. That's not saying that right thing was here. He was about making it right. So even though I was gone, I missed him, I played with him every single day, played with his wife, that they, that they, 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 they did better for her, and to know that she had a true man, a true woman, that was going to be there for her. And to know that she had a true man that was right for the commission, and he would be well, well this. I thank him that with him now, I have a place I can call home, that I can come to, that when I want to do events, I do have a place I can do events for her. And, and to bring the folks out in this community that want to come out, come out and do the right thing. So with that being said, I contribute to Mr. Uh, Keith Carrington, who's going on now. 
But now, nonetheless, his legacy will always be remembered here at North Division High School, and I will always be a part of what goes on, how it goes on, and in the community. Because I am about the community. I uh, like making sure. And when we do that, you can know, we'll have success, you be very successful. Like now, we have a young man who I never met before in my life. Um, he reached out to me and, I, and, I, and my good friend, my, I call him my brother. I call him like my baby brother on Hilaria. He's like another brother to me now. Because he did not get on the edge, it's a bunch, but. When I heard from my brother, he was hilarious, and he said, Jimmy, you know what, Zach, I got a job for you, basically. So he like put me on it, and he put me in contact with a young man who I've never met in my life. Who, I mean, I hope I wish he had known for years and years and years. But this is going to show you in life that when God is ready for you to meet and know people, he'll put them in your life for a reason. Young men, don't go nowhere. I need to talk to you guys. Okay? So, uh, I um, want, okay, so I wanted to, to be able to ha have him to come and speak with you all about his little success in life and things that he goes through, what he's done, and how he's been very successful. Even though he might have you know, gone through things in life, he didn't give up. He kept on pushing and paying the weight. And he used today to bring you guys, bring you guys a good word, and I'm going to let you guys hear it from him. It's best to get it from him as opposed to me. So let's we see my good friend, someone I've never before, we met before, Mr. Will Martin. Why don't we thank him up with a good hand for hand for clap, Mr. Martin. Come on. Hey, I'm going to make this simple for you. Um, the story not for everybody, but hopefully it's for somebody. Right. So, um, I'm Will Martin. I grew up uh, pretty poor in Tennessee, so I'm almost a black you know? I grew up in uh, the mountains, uh, and um, you know, I don't know if you've been down to Tennessee, but it's a beautiful place, but it is a place that has limited opportunity. It's not a place where you can actually, um, uh, you know, become anything you want to be, because there's not all those opportunities there. Um, but I grew up in a family where the mother and the father didn't get along. Um, you know, there was a lot of controversy. But the one thing I knew was if I studied, people left me alone. So I got, you know, one of the lessons I learned early in life is find your own coping mechanism. For me, it was education. As long as I was reading a book or doing something, I got left alone, that was cool. By the time I was 14, I got my first job. And it was a little, little job working at Smoky Mountain National Park. And out of that, I got to meet a group of people who helped me kind of move forward in life. By the time I was 16, I got a chance to study overseas. And it really changed my life, you know. I got a scholarship. So I would just say to you, if you're thinking about like, what, what's the path for you, what do you want to actually get accomplished, there are so many opportunities out here, you're just going to be open to them. Um, Make sure that you get a chance to, to interact with people who are doing the things you want to do. If you don't know what your path is, you don't, you know, I see that there are kids out there. You may not know the path for yourself right now, but getting a chance to get to know your teacher, your pastor, your librarian, other people in your community that you want to be like, asking them how they got to where they are. You know, in my case, I got a chance to study overseas. And that's not something that everybody gets a chance to do, but it, it changed my life. And it's how I actually ended up getting to Wisconsin because I got a scholarship to come to school here. That then put me in, in touch with other people who were doing things I wanted to do. Um, I got a chance to meet some, some young people in my class. They went on to go work for Governor Tommy Thompson. Now, you know, for somebody who grew up poor in Tennessee, to be able to come to Wisconsin and work for the governor, I never dreamed. I could, I could get a chance to do that. And that opened up yet more doors. And I would just say another lesson that I learned in life is be kind to other people. It's not about what you get from them, but just the, the, the ability to be kind and help other people on their path. And because I did that in college, 
these young ladies that I met who were working already for Tommy Thompson, they put in a word for me and I ended up working for the longest serving governor in the history of the state. And that opened up yet more doors for me. Um, another of the lessons that I've just learned in life is take advantage of every opportunity. Whether you think it's an opportunity or not, even just coming here today. I've never met Pastor Pratt, but I know she's trying to do something good for the community. So she asked me if I'd come speak, and then she said, Hilario's well, coming to speak, and that's all it took was knowing that well, Hilario was coming. So just taking advantage of every opportunity. Because I took advantage in high school, I got a chance to, to live overseas. Because I took that experience, I got a chance to get a scholarship at the Lake College. Because of that opportunity and meeting people, I got a chance to work for the governor. And I just finished running for lieutenant governor in the state, and I lost. But I got over 50,000 votes across the state of Wisconsin. And I got a chance to meet people in virtually every county in the state. And so you just don't know what the opportunity will become if you, if you should step out on faith and take advantage of the first opportunity it leads to the next opportunity. So, so don't let them pass you by. I'm moving down, moving down farther here, but you have a couple of speakers that's on hand here, right at us right now. And one of the young ladies I would like to bring up, she is a dear, close friend of mine. Uh, no matter where I go, no matter what side of town is, black, yellow, green, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Chinese, she's always there with me. Uh, and we work so close together in the community sharing, educating, getting people to show what besides the color thing and, and, and come together as one. And I can't tell you enough that if you ever want a good plan and a good person to consult in, to talk to, to be a good walking, I would like to introduce none other than my friend, Sue Lynch. Let's just see her by the real hand Well, thank you, Virginia. Um, you know, she is so underrated as to what she can do for the community. I have been working with Virginia for the last several years, and that woman is just a mover and a shaker. And so let's give Virginia a huge round of applause for all the work that she is doing to try to make uh, Milwaukee a better community. And in she, as she said, Virginia and I have been friends for now several years. And when I first met her, um, you know, you kind of had that electricity between each other and say, yeah, you know, we can we can make things rock. And it really over the over the years, um, we've done some great things together to help enhance our community. Uh, I live in Kenosha. Uh, my background is uh, political. Um, all of the work that I've done over the last several years, uh, really the years around uh, getting conservative candidates selected at all levels of government. But when you work in politics, it really comes down to issues. And issues are what I look at when I see candidates from office whether or not they support my values. And one of the, um, the groups that we, uh, we, Virginia and I, are a part of is called Conservative with Women. And in this group, uh, conservative women are active in providing uh, you know, information to different uh, outreach sectors on issues that are pertinent to today. And about a year and a half ago, uh, the conservative women of Wisconsin were addressing the uh, human trafficking uh, issues that are being faced with in our, in our country, not just here in the state of Wisconsin. And so we held a seminar uh, in Milwaukee, or Wauwatosa actually, and had a number of uh, guests speak about human trafficking. And I, I was I was dumbfounded at all of what's happening on human trafficking. We think that human trafficking is at the east coast and the west coast, but really it's right here in Wisconsin. 
And had it not been for uh, law enforcement and advocacy groups that address this issue, I would have never been educated on the problem that we're faced with in human trafficking. And I just wanted to give you a couple of statistics because I, except for a few young men out there, um, the crowd is all women, young women, and you're the perfect target for those human traffickers. Uh, the common age or the average age for child sex trafficking is 13. Now, I don't know how old you girls are, but you look like you're around that age, 10, 12, 14, 16. It is just a problem that that is one of the targeted ages. Um, yes, it is right here in Wisconsin, and law enforcement who's standing in the back, I'm sure they could tell you story upon story of how um, sex trafficking, child trafficking, human trafficking works, but the common recruit, recruiting methods that these perverts use and prey on our children and I have two daughters. Now they're a little bit older, but I also have a granddaughter and a grandson. It's not uh, just the girls. There are boys that are trafficked. But, you know, the um, personal social networks, they watch them like a hawk. And I know that my granddaughter is, um, you know, on the computer and, and watching videos. And I always say, you know, there are cookies in there that really uh, are watching what you're doing every day. So be, be, be aware of that. A romantic relationship, you know, they, they prey on those um, young women and men who might have, um, you know, been um, a, 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 an affair or something, or a relationship might have been broken up. Uh, you know, you let you cry out to find help and let people hear how you feel. Uh, that's another way that these uh, predators uh, really try to lure, um, lure uh, our, our, our younger um, boys and girls. Um, and then, you know, with money. Uh, I know that one of the examples that was given by law enforcement at one of these conferences uh, they talked about, you know, standing in the gas station and when the, the young people would come in, they would lure them with money. And of course, we all like money. However, uh, the outcome was just tragic. And when you think about um, the problem that really does exist here in Wisconsin with human trafficking, we all have to have our eyes open. And so if my, my, my takeaway from uh, this short little informational talk is um, if you ever feel that you're being, being violated or stopped to speak out, you know, clerks in the uh, convenience stores now have training, um, store clerks in clothing stores, uh, venues like fairs all have training now where if something like that occurs within an instant, uh, law enforcement and, um, and the people who facilitate some of these larger events or own businesses have realized the problem here in Wisconsin. And there would be nothing more tragic than a mom or a dad to lose a child uh, through trafficking because once they're trafficked and if they are found, the rehab uh, of those um, of those children uh, or even adults uh, is just long term and so devastating. So um, I, I it's just a few tidbits on, on human trafficking, sex trafficking, child trafficking. It's all, it's all the same. Yeah. But I did want to... Welcome to North Division High School with Dr. Alex Skorowski Auditorium. Today we are having a, today we are having an event and we welcome you and November 8th, I'm going to sneak this in. Don't forget to vote. Get on the vote. Okay.
Um, my name is Jared, uh, Jared Harper. I've uh, lived in Wisconsin probably like three years. Originally came from uh, Illinois. Um, not really anything to brag about, in all honesty. But uh, I came from a very grown up family, and not, not as much as I've heard. I've had a lot of stories. I've been involved in trying to fight the good, the combative against human trafficking. I've been involved in the way we've actually found and tried to uh, get women out of it, which is probably one of the hardest things to do um, because they're held uh, at way more liability or way more reasons to be held there emotionally than, than they think because they don't represent anything outside of that world. Uh, I've been involved in uh, orphanage, I've been involved in um, homelessness, I've been involved in a lot of different things because I realize we have such a failure in our world, in our culture, and it's under attack. And it is the biblical perspective of what family is. You look at you look at our culture and you see all these men that are in um, that are in the uh, in the uh, correction facilities, right? We just had some ladies here earlier that talk about that, right? And we have a failure of men to stand up and raise their families, to stand up and be righteous men, to be kings, to be preachers, to be pastors to their family, protectors and providers for their families. And, and in all honesty, what I see before us, I saw some, uh, some ladies here before, and I saw some older, we have a wide variety of people here, is the thing that I, I want to say, and the thing I really want to bring before you is we can't fix any of this without Christ, without God. And I want to, I want to mention um, the will of Okay, go ahead. Okay, Kevin, I would like to say that uh, to you, 
I am so grateful and thankful for you that all you do in the community, in Milwaukee County, wherever we go, I'm proud of you. I cannot do this in here without you. And thank you again for the book bag that you have supplied me. And I, and I, and I got a good team helper that works with me every year to do this. This is Sue and I, and we make it our third year uh, out in the community. Let me specify, Milwaukee County doing the deed, giving out the book bag. And we appreciate it, and the kids appreciate it too. So keep up doing your good work. Know that I'm here for you, I'm praying for you, and good days and better things lies ahead, okay? God bless you. Thank you. See you soon. Soon? See you soon. Grab a, grab a big pack. Oh, well, um, my name is Sue Lynch, and I work with No Better Friends, and we're just always happy to do uh, this book day for Virginia. Uh, you know, so many children uh, appreciate just the small things in life, and, you know, this is one way that we can help make their life better. And so, Kevin, on behalf of No Better Friends, um, Kevin is always delighted to support this type of a, an adventure here in Milwaukee County. Uh, so if you're not doing anything today and want to come out and get a book bag here um, at our event, we'll, please feel free to stop by. Yes. Yeah. We are here from 11 a.m. We started, we are actually, we're going on now to 3 o'clock. So if you want to stop by, our food should be here soon. We're looking for uh, hot dogs, burgers, and chips. And
I say to the ones that was here, I thank you because you were here because God wanted you here. And as we move forward, for the ones that are here, I thank you. Mr. Will, thank you for coming. Hilario, thank you for coming. Uh, I don't have, I do a lot in the community. If I can help you, uh, uh, please reach out to me. If I can help you, please reach out. I'll do what I can to help you. But at the same time, I think y'all going forward that we all need to try to come together, work together, stay together, and make some stuff happen in Milwaukee County. Milwaukee County is a, a big E for just like people that you're around today. You know, some people are, are here today, they were looking for something. If it wasn't nothing but a, a word, an encouraging word, they were looking for something. And I'm thanking God and I'm hoping that knowing that they left their day receiving something. Um, at the end of this day, we the people here walk and thank you again. We ask that you uh, don't let this be your last time. Come out and join us again. We'll keep you posted as we move around Milwaukee, uh, touching the people alive and making a difference. Everybody have a story they can tell that will hurt, that will help a person. And that's what some people are talking about. Like, I, and I give you good experience tonight, Denise. Denise is not here today. But this is a young lady that you can follow with us, and she used to tell her story. Her story has helped so many along the way with our group, uh, the ladies who has turned themselves around. You know, when I mean by that, here is the trafficking, prostitutes, prostitutes and stuff like that. They don't do that no more. You know, when they, when they came and they heard the next story, and then he shared her story how she was an old comma, they applied that, they applied that to them lives, to their lives now, and they were actually using it. Now they were actually working closer with Denise helping make a difference and they work with me closely in the field. And that's what I like seeing is helping people change their life around. Or well, we can see a difference in it. But if I continue to be selfish and not want to put you in the right direction, I'm not hurting them. I'm, I'm, hurt. I'm not helping them. I'm hurting them. So I say to you all, God bless you all. Thank you for coming. Black people, uh, Greg, for coming by. Greg and his wife, thank you all for coming by. I will see you all again. And all those days we say, thank you, Jesus. Everybody go ahead. We have a good evening. God bless. Yeah. Freedom of Mind TV uh, here with uh, at the great event for uh, the uh, We the People. We have a couple of people here, Hilario De Leon and, and Will, uh, just ran for office, uh, Lieutenant Governor. Uh, what do you guys think about the event? Uh, you had a great time. I uh, heard you some speakers. Uh, but what do you guys think about it? How, how did it go? Uh, Larry, you yeah. Well, I mean, I thought it was a very great opportunity for people, you know, within our uh, mm -hmm. background, being very involved in politics or in the business community, uh, coming to the north side of Milwaukee and actually connecting with people, you know, maybe they're struggling in life or maybe they are very successful and they're trying to reach out to more people in their actual community, mm -hmm. which is very important. Not a lot of communities have such strong advocates right. out there, whether it's for jobs or housing or trying to lower crime or just trying to get them out to vote, which right. is something that I talked about. I mean, voting is very important. Although I'm the second vice chair of the Republican Party of Milwaukee County, mm -hmm. I wasn't here to push the Republican Party on people. I was here to say, like, look, we had 67,000 people in the last presidential mm -hmm. election that did not vote, mm -hmm. which is very unfortunate. They were registered to vote. So we got to figure out ways to get more people involved within our uh election cycle within their community be advocates I mean this is how a republic properly right. functions when everyone is working together for the uh, same goals so right. I thought it was a great opportunity I mean big or small crowds it does not right. matter right. I mean uh, I'm not as religious as many other people right. but right. our former first vice chair mm -hmm. of our county party would say Jesus changed the world with 12 people right. and there's definitely more than 12 people that were at this event for sure Right, and there's no doubt about it. And, and, and when you when you have the the new technology now, people will be looking at this would be a lot more than whoever could have possibly been here. Exactly, that's the power of the media because we can bring this to them, mm -hmm. and that's the wonderful thing. Now you not have to actually be here to hear the message. And Will had a great thing, and you had a great. Uh, Will Bart had a great. Yeah. Will Bart, tell us a little about about yourself. Yeah. And I know, are you a native of Milwaukee? I know you're a business no, man. No, I started in Tennessee. I mean, okay. like I, I'd say I'm uh, almost a black hillbilly. So I came out <laughs> of the mountains, 
and got a chance uh, to go overseas, uh, then came to Wisconsin with a scholarship for college and never left. It's been a, I have told people many a times, it's been an opportunity state for me. And I think we just got to work harder to make sure it's an opportunity state for everyone right. in here. Right. Um, the thing I like about today is the fact that it's dealing with real issues. Right. There are right. people who came here with real problems right. and real people who were helping them solve those. Right. So a lot of these times you go to events and you know a lot of people talking at people. Yeah. This is folks that are able to come and say, here's my real need today. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a beautiful thing to be able to come out and, and actually yeah. see people getting real help. One thing we were able mm -hmm. to actually do, we had a few young gentlemen, they came in and mm -hmm. they were struggling with being evicted out of their uh, house. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, evicted out of their home with their uh, mother and the rest of the family, which mm -hmm. is very unfortunate. So, I mean, Will, myself, and a few others, we have different contacts or locations where we know that can help people that are struggling with this very issue. So we get, wrote down the addresses and we gave it to them and, you know, I wish them the best of luck and hopefully they are able to turn their life around, which is amazing because this is the second time that this happened to me this week. I had someone down at the Lincoln Avenue office come in. He too uh, was homeless, but living out of his okay. car. But you know, I saw him yesterday, and he he didn't have a phone the day before I met him. And the mm -hmm. second day I met him, he already had a phone, and he was working and trying to turn his life around. So it's very encouraging to see that. Well, happen. Someone homeless came here. Yes. At this event. Mm -hmm. Yes. Really? And, and, and where? Some young teenagers. Okay. Yeah, that came oh, teenagers here. were homeless. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so wow, actually, wow. but that's the beauty is you mm -hmm. don't know who will come. Right. And I think it's a huge uh, message mm -hmm. about trust, mm -hmm. right, right. right? That they can actually feel comfortable enough to come yep. to this event and feel like they share that message. I, I've been down in Jackson, Tennessee, mm -hmm. a little small town, and uh, okay. a lot of roosters and not a whole lot going on. <laughs> but, uh, <it's> <laughs> My niece actually, she went down there and did really well for herself. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, uh, so I think that's probably on the western side. Uh, I'm a, I think so, down there in Wayne. It looks right. really nice. Well, and then they don't do the same um, density, right? Okay. So a okay. lot of what, yeah. what we've learned, I think, over the years is mm -hmm. we used to create these places where we put hundreds of yep. people in, yep. in one place together. Mm -hmm. and it becomes unproductive, yeah. right? I mean, you're yeah. just putting everybody, you know, crammed on top of each other, which is not how anybody else no. lives, right? No, no. So the nice thing is that, you know, I think the government learned some lessons and then they began to create more housing that's more okay. the style that you're talking yeah, about. So yeah, yeah. even if you think about uh, what West Lawn used to look like, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and some of those areas where mm -hmm. they went Hillside. from. Hillside. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So from this huge, you know, building to yeah. now much more of these cottages, right, yeah. where, where it's much more. Um, less density right more of a neighborhood yeah. more community more play space yes i was going to say that space right. is important you don't feel like you're on top of each oh, other right i mean and why should you be stuck west know, lawn exactly right. it looks now it's really nice exactly right. so now you feel like a sense mm -hmm. of pride yep. of where you live as opposed to feeling like you're stacked up and confined in, a, in yep. an area where kids can't play right, right you know and by the way these gentlemen did not say anything about their party affiliation i'm glad that uh and, and it, it's not about party. I don't really believe in party. I think mm -hmm. those are things that keep us divided. Mm -hmm. You know, when, as soon as you hear the Republican or Democrat, people turn off their ears. Right. And it's sad. Well, even when I was speaking and I was told that obviously don't talk politics or anything. Right. It's nonpartisan event, right. which is perfectly fine. Right. Uh, I did struggle through my speech, <laughs> but uh, I was able to get the point across. And I yeah. learned this from uh, former Alderman Donovan, mm -hmm. uh, who was a nonpartisan right. uh, exactly. politician right. while he was an alderman. And he said, there's nothing Republican or Democrat about wanting to clean up our streets, nope. keep the street lights on, mm -hmm. and keeping our streets safe. Yeah. So I think I hope that the people that were here, they yeah. were able to hear that. And the ones and, who are watching. Yeah, and the ones that are watching right. today, the hopefully watching. they understand that, like, look, I think we all want the same mm -hmm. thing. That's how we get there that divides us. Right. And mm -hmm. really, there's nothing that should be so divisive about those small things, especially nothing. within the city of Milwaukee. So you were saying about so many more people will see this now, um, you know. Yeah, then, then who actually here. Right. If, so, if it was no one here, yeah. which was a, quite a few people here yeah. for, our, for our viewers, and, uh, but people will see this geographically, you mm -hmm. know, with the technology now. Well, I just want to make sure that mm -hmm. we say to everyone, mm -hmm. come the next time, come yeah. the next yeah. time. Yeah. Because it's one thing to mm -hmm. view it. Right. It's another thing to be a part of it. Right. 
and to be able to be a part of the solution, mm -hmm. right? right? The only way we solve problems is yeah. everybody coming together. And, 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 it, and that's exactly right, Will and, and, and Hilario. And what I like to tell people, we're in a war. Mm -hmm. This is a war. And, and don't think that people weren't told not to be here. Don't think that their, the word didn't go out. I've interviewed everybody in this community. Mm -hmm. for, I've been in this, involved in this thing for like 40 years. Mm -hmm. With my TV show, with going out and talking to people. From any, I don't care who you are. If you have a solution to solve these problems, yeah. let's sit down and have a talk. I don't care whether you're Democrat. I, don't, that, I can't care less about that. Mm -hmm. that. That's irrelevant to me. What pe Most people are lovers of community. Mm -hmm. We go to church. We worship. We go we, our neighbors. We sit yeah. back and have you know, a, a, a drink and a, co yeah. a conversation. Yeah. And nobody asks who were who. I don't even know what the difference is other than the people who have an agenda. Right. Yeah in those parties mm -hmm. but we're we're not party people we're regular people i think what black hillbillies mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think what was very encouraging about today when i was yeah. walked up on stage yeah. i was mostly in the hallway talking yeah. to people but uh seeing how many young people mm -hmm. were actually here right. in the crowd and right. i really hope that that message as someone who you mm -hmm. know i'm right. only 21 i only right. graduated from uh, high school in 2019 so wow. i've only been out for a few years yeah uh I really hope that they take that mm -hmm. message of, you know, yeah. I struggled with school. Yeah. And many other people struggle with school nowadays. Yeah. You can look at the test scores, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. I hope that they just continue to power through it because mm -hmm. uh, I couldn't wait to get out of high school. Yeah. But I, that's just me. Right, I, I right, wanted right, to grow right. up pretty fast, and <laughs> here I am. Uh, so I really hope that they continue to yeah. stick with it no matter how much they're struggling. I hope that their parents encourage them mm -hmm. to, you know, Go live your dreams. I yeah. want to get involved in politics. Mm -hmm. People look at me I'm like I'm nuts, but that's because I'm a people person, <laughs> right, and I right. really want to see the community do well. Yeah. So I hope that these kids will be able to follow their dreams mm -hmm. and, and live the yeah. American dream and exactly. have the opportunities that people like Will mm -hmm. and others have had and just make your life successful. Yeah. You know, it is, it, it, it is funny because there's a little history of, 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 of this school, North Division, I'm from the rival of North Division, Lincoln. Okay. I went to Lincoln High School, and the fact of me standing here We're not gonna have at, any at the Lincoln Comet against my, our rival, North Division, uh, we whooped them up pretty good uh, when, I, when I was on the football team and some of our sports teams. I know some of you guys have a different take on that, but that's okay. But, you know, it's, it's amazing <laughs> because it's like Ohio State and Michigan, North Division and Lincoln. That's how strong those rivalries still are mm -hmm. to this very day. But that's when you put everything aside, you know, Republican, Democrat, Lincoln, you know, North Division, and this is where we are. I mean, the fact that I'm standing here is historical mm -hmm. because we need to come together for mm -hmm. our youth. This is a youth yeah. event to try to bring everybody together. Well, I think the beautiful thing is that the school actually opened their doors on yeah. a Saturday to allow yep. this to even happen. Exactly. So I think, you know, just the fact yeah. that that occurred. Yeah. In the background of losing their principal exactly. just a couple of days ago, which was heartbreaking to lose your principal mm -hmm. when school is about to start another few days here right. at North Division. Right. When I got a call from Virginia and mm -hmm. I heard that they lost their yeah. principal, I was absolutely shocked because I knew that they were partnering right. with the school and I wasn't sure if the event was going on yeah. or not still. But uh, I'm glad that they were still able to carry on and say a yeah. prayer and, you know, pray for the family of that principal. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Amazing guy. If you guys did any research about this guy, what an amazing guy the kids looked up to. Mm -hmm. They love the guy. You know, one of those kind of guys that says, I have a group, we have a, we have a situation here where we're going to keep tabs on these, some, of these, some of these problem children. And they had a program here where he kept tab on these kids. Wow. They all made sure that we're going to be a part of these kids' lives. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to slip through the cracks. This is the kind of guy he was. And God bless his family and his his, his children in Virginia, he went against a lot of people to get Virginia in this place. This is a regular a, a opportunity for us to use our events here. Mm -hmm. He made that happen. And it's a beautiful facility. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the it, idea it that a lot of oppression. the doors yeah. after all these things yeah. that just happened. Yeah. And with school just about to start. Yeah. That's yeah. really. But he, he made that happen. Thank you guys for being on the Free Your Mind uh, show again. We thank Will and we thank Hilario. Hey, thank God you bless you guys. Us. Peace. We see you later. God bless. Yeah, Virginia. You need me?